Our text today comes from the gospel, according to Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened. And all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learn from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us, let us pray. Almighty God, we just thank you for bringing us into a new year. We celebrate your faithfulness and your goodness, Lord, because you have kept us. We are here, we are still here for your purposes. Lord, help us to release in this moment any distraction, anything that might hinder your word from going forth. Help us to release our unforgiveness. Help us to release our worry and anxiety. Help us to, to trust in you, Lord. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the beginning, God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And God made the stars. And God made the stars. In this season of Epiphany, let's look up. Let's lift our heads. Let's lift our countenance. Let's lift our spirits and notice the light that has come into the world. Arise, for your light has come. Ask yourself, what does the light 
want me to notice? How can this year be the year that I gain my spiritual sight? How can my spiritual life, my spiritual focus be transformed? Where do I begin? Well, how about at the beginning? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He, that is Jesus, was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The darkness did not understand it. The darkness could not comprehend it. And so we need to understand this light. We need to focus on this light. It's time that we understand the purpose of light coming into the world. We need an epiphany a sighting, something that grabs our attention and causes us to stop, back up, maybe take stock of our lives, maybe finally notice that the light is even here. It's time that we notice that thing, that disturbance, those things we would rather not deal with, the thing we have ignored, the thing that's been trying to get our attention through a pandemic, through sickness, through losses, and even through gains. If something is disturbing you, some situation, some unresolved issue from 2021, some unmet goal, or unfinished business, some heartbreak or disappointment. If you are feeling disturbed about anything, then you are at the right place. <laughs> this first Sunday of the year, you're at the right place. I remember last year about this time, I remember the disturbance I felt at the beginning of 2021. And that disturbance came to me in the form of a star word. I don't know about the rest of you, but my star word from last year really disturbed me. <laughs> See, my word was forgive. And for the first few weeks, I grumbled about it. I couldn't even bring myself to say it aloud or to share it with anybody. And if I'm honest, I was slightly embarrassed by it, even ashamed. I thought it was a mistake, that somehow I got it wrong. I got the wrong word. And so I initially ignored it not realizing that my choice to ignore it was also my choice to remain in the darkness of my unforgiveness. I couldn't imagine me, a preacher of the gospel, the same gospel message of forgiveness and reconciliation that I was somehow struggling to forgive. And so while reading this text, Preparing for this message, it occurred to me that if Herod had been given a star word, his word could have been or should have been see, behold, see. And I bet his first response would have been similar to mine. He might have said, well, I'm not blind. But according to this text, he, in fact, is blind, spiritually blind. 
Herod's reaction to light coming into the world was fear. He feared what the light might reveal. And like Herod, we also fear a great many things. We fear the unknown. We fear new things. And we're, we're afraid to try new things. And you might say to yourself, no, not me. But I would disagree. We like what we like. We like what we know. And when something different happens, <laughs> oh, like this, for example, right? Like hybrid worship. It's unsettling, right? Because it's not what we know. And so we're afraid of a lot of things. But, but what if, what if this light that has come into the world was not to be feared? What if the light wanted to love us, to equip us, to energize us and deliver us from our blindness, to deliver us from our darkness, to recover sight to the blind. The wise men from the East brought to Herod a new thing, a revelation, a vision of the future. And they asked, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising. We observed, we noticed the light. We saw a sign and we didn't ignore it, but we followed it. We noticed, we didn't ignore, and we followed it. And so when King Herod heard this news about a child, he was frightened. In fact, it says, and all of Jerusalem with him. You can see that leaders have a lot of influence. So if I'm frightened, I'm going to project that onto you, right? And so Herod, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And so he gathered the chief priests and the scribes to learn more about this child. And again, they confirmed what the wise men revealed. Sometimes we hear something and we say no. We see something and we say no, and we, we may shit. And so God sent confirmation. And, and, and the, the chief priests and the scribes revealed to Herod, for so it has been written by the prophet, a ruler shall come who is to shepherd Israel. Herod is thinking, I shepherd Israel. And so after he heard what the Jewish leaders said, Herod went even darker. He went even darker and he called a secret meeting of the wise men. You see, dark things are done in secret. Why the secrecy, Herod? Because fear and secrecy are buddies. Lies are formed, hate is multiplied, and when pride is our God, all of these emotions working together, they can concoct death and destruction. It's a cauldron of instability, of repressed anger, of ignorance, of one's inability to see the truth to see what's right in front of them, to see light. Because fear and secrecy, they block, they block the truth. And so Herod is very disturbed by the light. The thought of another ruler coming to take his place, one more powerful, made him fearful. So if you step back for a minute and think about it, 
imagine here we have this grown man with all this power and he's afraid of a baby. He's afraid of a child. When you follow light, I believe at least two things happen. At least two things. First, darkness is revealed. Your darkness and other people's darkness. And secondly, brighter light or clarity is given. A way out of darkness is given, which usually involves going another way. It involves a change. And so the wise men who followed the star received clarity and were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod with the news of Jesus's birth. And when Herod realized he had been outwitted by the Magi, he became furious. So furious that he gave orders to kill babies. Talk about rage. What kind of rage lives within a person that they give orders to kill babies? I'm talking about spiritual blindness, which leads to fear and fear leads to secrecy and lies are birthed in secrecy as is hate and fury and rage and pride dominates. Pride will lead us to make bad decisions. Ego, when our ego is in charge, we make bad decisions. Like using our powers, not for good, but for evil. Pride keeps us all in a state of spiritual blindness because we think we know better. We believe our eyesight is accurate. So I believe that Herod needed a disruption. He needed an epiphany. He needed a star word. (laughs) He needed to see. And so once I made up my mind to follow the light and explore with intention my star word, forgive, I went through some some changes. And for a while, it got darker. It got darker for me. It, It sort of messed with my own ego because I see myself in a certain way. Don't you see yourself in a certain way? And so I needed to let go of my false image of myself. Just because I I wear this robe doesn't mean I have it all together. Isn't that right, Anthony? Doesn't mean that at all. (laughs) So I needed to view myself through the spiritual lens of God. I imagine, now that I think about it, any word Any word that was given to me or even one that I chose for myself would give me pause. See, the year before, 2020, my word was kindness. Not even realizing that kindness would become a huge focus during the pandemic. And the first question I asked the Lord when I received this word, kindness, Am I unkind? Right? Am I missing something? And I believe this is what I heard the Lord say to me. Sometimes you are unkind. But we can work on this. We can work on this. Because there are so many broken places in our lives. And because we can't do justice To all of them at the same time, a star word allows us to focus. And let me just say, wow, to what God can do with one word. Sometimes we just need one word 
from the Lord. You see, when we follow the light, the possibilities are endless because when you stay with it, hmm, week after week and month after month, it begins to impact every area of your life. So it was not just about being kind to others. It was also about being kind to myself. See, because I'm very hard on myself, very demanding. And sometimes I'm not very nice to myself. And it wasn't just about my unforgiveness and the wrong done to me by others. It was about my willingness to forgive myself for the mistakes I've made, for things I've said and done. Am I truly living as a forgiven sinner? Because if I struggle to forgive myself, then how can I even begin to know how to forgive other people? And by not forgiving others, I walk in judgment. I lack compassion for other human beings. Therefore, forgiveness is connected to compassion. And the more compassion I am graced by God to offer, the less likely I am to judge. And it continues to go deeper and deeper. So I, this is what I want you to see. This is what I want you to behold. I want you to see how my focus on forgiveness is attached to so many other things. It's attached to compassion and judgment. It's con it's attached to my love of self, right? Because uh, Paul says love is patient and love is kind. It's attached to gentleness of myself, to be easy on myself, to forgive myself. It's attached to loving my neighbor as myself. It's attached to my ability to confess my sins and repent of them. And my belief in the forgiveness of the risen Christ. So I started at forgiveness and I ended up at, well, do I truly believe that I'm forgiven? I traveled. And so when I go down the path of light, the world, the whole world gets brighter and brighter as God leads me into God's truth and not mine. God wants to deal with each and every one of us. And a star word offers us a way, not the only way, but a way into the depths of our own lives. It's a way for us to transform. So what am I saying? I'm saying we're, we're in a new year. It's 2022, which is, which is crazy, right? I feel like, you know, this is Star Wars. You know, when we used to look at Star Wars at the very beginning, they would be like, in the year 2022, right? And here we are. We're living in the year 22, 2022. And so in this year, I think we need to be more focused. We need a spiritual focus. We can't just say to ourselves, you know what, I'm going to be better this year. I'm going to do better this year. And presto, change, yo, mm, I'm good. The light has come into the world. Okay, so now let's invite the light in. Right? Let's invite the light in. And at first, it may not be pleasant. Because the glare will be a lot to take. But when you sit in the light for a while, just for a little while, things become clearer and clearer. And yes, there will be those days when you close your eyes to the light because the light has revealed a stumbling block. The light has uncovered a secret, a deep pain. The light has resurfaced what you've tried to bury. And the light has shown you some things that make you uncomfortable. And so you close your eyes 
Because sometimes, truthfully, we need to process some of the stuff that God shows us so much. So the light can be overwhelming to the human condition, to the darkness of this world. And often we don't understand the light. We can't comprehend it all. But maybe that's not our job. (laughs) But like anything else, in order to understand the light, we have to stick with the light. We have to stick with it. We have to stay in the light. Stay in the light. Get some focus in 2022. Let God in in 2022. Let the light lead you in 2022. So what star word will Jesus use to get us closer to him? I'm going to offer us a prayer. And then I'm going to ask you to come up here and get your star word. And there's a slip of paper there with some instructions. I don't want you to pick it up and look at it and then put it back down and pick another one. Right? The one you pick up is the one that's meant for you. Trust and believe that. And for those of you online, I'm going to send you a link later this afternoon where you can electronically select your star word. Okay, so let us pray. Epiphany. The celebration of God's presence breaking through to shine as a light in the darkness. God, we acknowledge that we are not always ready to receive your best gifts for us. You have given us an epiphany word in order that our searching will bring us to you. It is often our habit to turn aside, and stumble over, or even reject experiences and encounters that will later that we will later understand to have been precious gifts so help us this day to be open to the gift that you offer us now through our star words we acknowledge that we do not fully understand what this word might mean for our faith but we receive it from you with gratitude and pray that your spirit will enable us to live into our word with intention and faithfulness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.